up to this point, we've been talking a lot about motion. We've started uh, with the trajectory. We'll review here in just a moment. The trajectory, which is the quantitative description of motion. And so the trajectory, which is some vector function of time, uh, describes the motion of something. It could be an object. We use the particle model so we can describe an object as a single point when we use the trajectory many times. And out of the trajectory, uh, we've talked about the displacement, which uh, we call delta r, which is the difference between any two vectors and two points of time of the trajectory itself. Given the displacement, we've described the average velocity, which is, here's the v average, which is also a vector, which is the displacement divided by the time interval between those two points in time. And so now we want to move on and describe the average acceleration. The average acceleration is also a vector. And uh, conveniently enough, it's described as the difference between two velocities in two uh, points in time. So let's take a look at uh, what that what that means. If I, I'm going to give myself a coordinate system here, uh, kind of a big one here. Let's say call that the x, this is the y, and uh, something like we had before. I have some particle that's going to be following a trajectory. It starts here, uh, some uh, later time here, maybe some later time here, and then some later time yet uh, here is at the bottom. And so this is a, a, we work with these, these are motion diagrams, which give us a snapshot of where the particle is at certain uh, uh, points in time. So in equal time intervals, the location of the particle. And so these locations can be uh, identified by vectors. These are individual uh, vectors of the trajectory. Here's at one point in time, at an equal time interval, the, the position is at a, can be defined by another vector, at a later point in time, by another vector, and by a uh, later point in time, another vector. Okay, so these are the specific uh, par, uh, vectors of the trajectory at these points in time that describe the motion uh, for this motion diagram. And so the displacement then are the differences between these vectors, and they point between the initial uh, position to the final position. So these are the displacements at uh, each point in time. So if we wanted to calculate the average velocity then, the average velocity for each point, there's some time interval, and so it would uh, uh, be then each displacement divided by the time interval. The velocity then point, the average velocity points in the same direction as the displacement. So for this first displacement, which is between the vector 0, 1, if this one's the vector 1, 2, and this one's 2, 3, then here this uh, average velocity would be pointing in the same direction as the displacement, 0, 1. So this 
displacement divided by the time. Because the time is just a scalar, the vector average velocity points in the same direction as the displacement vector. And so the average velocity between vector r1 and r2 points in this direction, the same direction as dis displacement, the difference between r2 and r1. And then vector 2, 3, the average velocity, would then point along the same, uh, the same direction. And now we have to, to have to be careful here because I've sort of, I've drawn the length of the average velocity 0, 1 to be the same length as the displacement delta r 0, 1. But these do not even have the same units. So you cannot compare those vectors directly. They are, they are however, pointing in the same direction. And also, because the time difference is the same for each of these segments of the motion diagram, the relative lengths between the average velocities as drawn on the motion diagram are relevant. This, this, uh, this length of the average velocity 2, 3 is larger than the length of the average velocity 1, 2, and, and that is significant, just like the displacements are larger, and the directions are significant. What you can't do in this sort of the picture is compare directly the lengths of the velocity vectors to the lengths of the displacement vectors because they're uh, different units entirely. Okay, so now we've drawn the average velocity vectors on this diagram. And so now let's take a look at what an average acceleration would look like. So an average acceleration then uh, would be the difference between two velocity vectors. So if we want to look at the average velocity, uh, the average acceleration then uh, in this first region, this would be uh, the vector, average velocity vector 1, 2, minus the velocity vector 0, 1, uh, divided by the time interval between the first vo the uh, uh, first velocity and the second one. So if we were to do that, let's just do that uh, uh, graphically. So if I take uh, v one two, it looks something like this, and so and now I want minus. Uh, v01, that's the same as adding the negative v01. And so v01, if this is uh, positive, then negative v01 is going to have the same length but in the opposite direction. And so I want to add that to v12, and so that's going to look like this. And then the resulting vector is going to point from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. And so this is the uh, difference, delta v, between those two vectors. And now the magnitude has to be scaled by delta t, but that gives us the direction. So I can sort of put that vector on my diagram here. I want to know this is sort of the average acceleration in this region. and it points uh, down. And so there's the average acceleration within that region. And so now let's look at the average acceleration in this region. And so this average acceleration is equal to the second velocity vector, 2, 3, minus the uh, previous velocity vector, vector 1, 2 over delta t. And so let's, uh, if we, we do that um, graphically, here's this velocity vector. It's long and, and uh, points in that direction. And now we need the opposite 
the negative of velocity 1, 2, and so it's the same magnitude, points in the opposite direction, so it goes that way. So I can add that using the tip to tail method. It's going back, uh, going back in that direction. And so then my average velocity, uh, lines aren't very straight here, but the, the, uh, you get the idea, the average velocity, the difference between these then goes from the tail of the first one to the tip of the, of the second one, so it also points down, that gives us the direction, and so the average velocity in uh, this region is also pointing downward. And so this is now a way to look at the displacement and the velocity and the average acceleration in terms of these uh, in terms of these motion diagrams. And so what the acceleration tells us the acceleration describes how the velocity is changing. It, it is this, the average velocity here is this difference between velocities over an interval of time. And so it's a measure of how these velocities are changing. Now, the, because velocity is a vector, the, the, the velocity, since it's a vector, it has a magnitude and a direction. And so the, uh, an acceleration can change either the magnitude or the direction. And that becomes, uh, and that becomes important because you can have a velocity that maintains its magnitude but changes direction under an acceleration because the velocity is a vector. And so here, we'll do a couple of examples in the, in the next module, but to review for given, this is all of our motion in this case are dealing with a ve with just with the vectors, our displacement vectors, the difference between the two objects. The velocity tells us how the displacement is changing with time, and the average acceleration is telling us how the velocity is changing with time. And we'll look at a couple examples of this in the next module.